Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Hopefully, you can see and hear okay. Today is packet day, of which the Sydney has a billion of. So, the first one we're going to start with. No, Deb, you are right on time. Um is the cargo packets. So you will need your magnetic snaps and your cargo pocket pieces. So those are the ones that we drew the lines and um, did the dots for snap placement. Um, so let's put the lining pieces aside for now. And we're gonna work on the cargo pocket exterior. Um, I had a small cutting mat and I have no idea where it is now. Hang on just one second. Okay, so for now, I'm going to cut on this Tupperware lid or Sterilite lid because I don't know where my smaller cutting mat is. So we had gone ahead and um, marked the snap placements on the exterior. So those are these dots right here. And we need to install a female part of a magnetic snap centered over each of the two marks. So we have the snaps that I have at least, um, our prong snaps. Um, which I prefer over the uh, sew-in snaps. The sew-in snaps have like uh, like holes in the four corners where you can sew it onto your project. Four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's separate these. So, um... How I remember male and female parts of snaps and stuff like that is, I mean, you kind of just, I'm not really going to say, but use your imagination and uh, uh, knowledge of anatomy, I suppose. So these are your female parts. So let's do this one. So I like to take the uh, washers that come with it and I like to center the dot right over in the middle so it'll look like that and like that and find my pen Hi, Inga. And then just kind of mark where those go. Let's do that on the other one, too. Hi, Kathy. And I like to use, I know some people use like seam rippers or um, little small scissors, but I actually like to use an X-Acto knife or the kind of seam ripper that is a blade and not, you know, like one of the pointy barbs. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut a slit right where the line is. 
and I'm cutting a couple of times to make sure that I get through. And I always try to cap this. I am making the Sydney crossbody bag. So um, by the end of the week, we will have a finished one. And today I am working on the pockets. Um, where are my scraps of interfacing? Okay, so I had mentioned that I like to keep um, scraps of interfacing and stabilizer just to put on the back of um, like when you're installing hardware and I had a bag that had some huh anyway I had some mini deco bill pieces oh never mind I found some Boom! Even better. So I have these little pieces of foam that I cut and let's, let's see if this will work. So your snap is going to go in like that and then you would want to put your foam behind it before you close it. Squish it down as much as possible and then go ahead and bend the prongs. So I like to bend mine out just so that it it's easier on my um, hands, so it's easier for me to do than to push them in. Plus, when I push them in, I find that the middle kind of gets a little bulky, so I don't like to do that. But I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and just kind of trim a little bit. And if you really want to be secure, grab your friend the duct tape. You don't need anything crazy. Actually, I put it this way so. This is not exactly to just keep it in place, the duct tape. It's more to prevent the um, like the edges of the prong from rubbing your fabric the wrong way and causing wear and tear. So let's repeat three more times.
Oh, see, I almost cut through the fabric. Good thing I looked. And we have two more for the other pocket. Kathy, I like to put the foam on um, to make sure that it's extra tight so there's no, like, there's no room for wiggle for the um, snaps to shift around or rip through the fabric. Alright, so now grab another female snap piece and put it through. Hey Monica. Oh my gosh. You know what I forgot to do? Put the actual washer on. Oh man. Good thing I remembered before it was too late to fix. I'm sitting here looking at them. I'm like, why do I still have so many washers? Duh. Okay, so we'll washer first. Then foam, bend it back out, and then put the tape back. See, and this is exactly why I do sew alongs, not because I think that I have a wealth of knowledge to teach you, because I really don't, but I want everybody to feel like they have the ability to make bags, even if you are new to it or you feel like you don't know what you're doing. Um, it's nice to see somebody else kind of, I don't want to say struggle, but you know, Know that it doesn't come easy to everybody else. So that's why I like doing these in live time because I can't go back and edit. Did I forget everything? No. I can't go back and edit things and make it look perfect. Because guess what? It's not. Oh, Beth, totally. Even if you aren't even talking and, you know, you're looking up and you can see somebody that's doing the same thing. It's kind of like, you know, like having a sewing circle or something, but obviously COVID. Like to 
fold the tape over a little bit so that I can find it easier next time. Oh, Kathy, I'm just good at regurgitating. When it comes to things that I am interested in, I am really good at remembering like all kinds of facts and stuff from when I'm reading or watching other videos or talking to people. But thank you. Okay, so after that we go through and mark the three lines on the correct side or right side of both exterior cargo pockets. So I did that right here. And pin the exterior cargo pocket to aligning cargo pocket right sides together and matching all edges. And remember, I am um, queen of fusing things that often have things whoops, hanging over, so just trim that a little so we don't get confused with our seam allowance. All oh, these scissors are horrible. So who is just watching and who is actually sewing? And who is actually sewing this versus sewing something else and just watching this for company, which is totally fine. Oh, checkbook covers. That's cool. Yay, so I see everybody's kind of doing something different, but I am glad to be with all of you. And I am really glad that I am finished cutting because oh my gosh that was not fun it took forever did it take forever for anybody else or was it just me because I ran out of fabric and then I kept forgetting pieces and I had to go back and cut some more but between cutting and interfacing we were on Monday we were on for over two hours I would say like two and a half and then after I went to Joanne yesterday and got more, of course, I had to go home and finish cutting out the straps. And then I had to interface everything. So it, I would say it took like a good three hours to cut out everything. Yes, Monica, I did too. So actually right before I got on here, I'm like, where's my front panel A? I swear I cut it out. And I couldn't find it anywhere, so I cut a new one and interfaced a new one. And then I couldn't find my front panel B, so I cut a new one. And of course I cut a new one, and then I found the old one. Okay, so we're doing... Yeah, no kidding. It's these these pieces are no joke. Mm. 
Oops. Okay, so we are going to start at the long bottom edge, sew along the side edge at quarter inch seam allowance, pivot at the top to continue along the top long edge, and then pivot again at the other side. Leave the bottom edge unsewn. So when you are sewing your pocket, make sure that you are paying attention to which side is the top. And since we're leaving the bottom edge unsewn, I am just going to pop in a couple of extra clips to remind myself of that. So then we are going to sew in... I mean, I guess you could start from here or here. So I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to trim off this extra. Okay, so move my pencils over a little bit. Line up to quarter inch. Hold the tails. I am about a two and a half stitch length. Wait, hang on. Now I gotta double check myself. So along the side edge. Okay, so we are sewing along the top edge. So always pivot with your um, needle in your fabric and then you move your presser foot up and then you sew. another stitch and turn it just so my seam allowance is right. stitches and let's go ahead and do the other one So who sells, or not who sells, who sews um, things besides 
purses or wallets. Do we have any garment sewers? Kids garments, adult garments, garments for you, other people. I like to, I like to at least try everything and by try, I mean buy all the supplies to do it and then maybe try it once and then never touch them again. Um, like bra making, I bought all the pieces and supplies that I would need to do that. I bought patterns, I tried once, didn't even finish it, and haven't touched it since. I will go back though, eventually. Lots of clothing for grandkids. Kids clothing is so cute and I love that it takes much less fabric than it does to make our clothing. So it's nice to do with those you know, larger pieces of scraps that you have, but aren't quite big enough to do something for yourself. Yes, that sports bras are are the one kind of bra that I can sew. That and the um, little black bra bralette from George and Ginger. Um, garments and home decor. That's cool. So home decor like uh, curtains and such. When I think of home decor, I think of curtains and pillowcases. So I've I've made pillowcases. Um, okay, I lied. One pillowcase. Um, yes, Shanova, I have seen some of your beautiful vintage dresses. And, oh, I didn't know you quilt too. Patricia, yes, I agree with that too. I, I like sewing wallets and bags because it doesn't require fitting. Um, it is very hard for me to fit things to my liking. Um, and I'm not very adept at it yet, so I get frustrated. And with bags, you can just, you don't have to fit anything, just measure it and go along. Hey Sally, welcome. I know it's pretty late for you. Stacy, not the opposite of not today, Bobbin, would be you winning a game of chicken. Chicken Bobbin. Bobbin Chicken. Which one is it? It's one or the other. When you manage to finish whatever it is with just the tiniest bit of thread left in your bobbin, that's when you win the game. So trim the seam allowance at the top corners only. And let me grab the good scissors. <laughs> oh, it's the other way around. You ran out. All right. So trim at the top two corners. I don't know how much she wants us to trim. So I am just trimming at angles so like that thank you Joyce I um I have a problem to uh, I have a problem with commitment <laughs> and and by commitment I don't mean relationship commitment but like I don't want to keep things on my machine that I may want to take off. So these are stickers, but I actually put like um, removable adhesive on the back of them. So that's why sometimes you'll see me like doing this to make sure it's back on there.
So when you are trimming your seam allowance at the top, make sure you don't cut into your stitches. Easier stuff that is not so fitted. I was working on um, t-shirts and I went through and counted all the t-shirt patterns that I have, like either women or unisex t-shirt patterns that I had. And I had, I think 15, 15, 15 t-shirt patterns. So I started making them and um, because I was determined to find which one was the correct fit. And so far I've made three of them and none of them are the one yet. So now we are going to turn the pocket right side out. Thank you, Kathy. I learned that somewhere. Um, I want to say maybe it was a Mrs. H pattern um, or it could have been another bag designer pattern. I'm not sure, but yeah, can't take the credit for that. I read it somewhere. So I'm using one of these uh, boning folder things. I got this from Shinova, this idea from Shinova. She recommended it and it is really good for getting out like these little corners that just don't want to behave. Right? I'll make all 15 shirts and then number 15 is going to be the one that I, I was like, why didn't I just start with this one? But it'll give me practice with my cover stitch machine because I have one, but I don't touch it that often. So let's turn out the other one and then I will press. I also have a ridiculous amount of legging patterns. How many pairs of leggings does one need? But I, I think I have more legging patterns than I do t-shirt patterns. And um, Athletic Knit is one of my favorite um, fabric braces, bases to buy. And I'm like, I don't, why do I even have all this? Because I don't work out. I'm not going anywhere. Thanks, COVID. But I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of it as like athleisure. Spending time at home. Might as well be wearing something comfortable. And if it's in fabric you like, it's even better. Okay, so I've got these. Oh no. I turned on my little tiny iron, but it's plugged into the other wall, so. It's not long enough to reach over here, so I just had to um, turn on and heat up my cordless um, iron. So, good time for a water break. Yes, I am excited to do that one too, the pearl. So later this month, the end of this month, Shinova will be um, starting her Pearl Sew so Along, uh, which will run for a month actually, and she'll be splitting it into four different sessions. Oh, Deb, I definitely, definitely agree with that. Where do you live? Sally, right now my favorite, favorite legging, leggings pattern, like all-purpose leggings pattern is... Um, from apostrophe patterns, the MyFit leggings. If you have not heard of them, they um, basically they're made to measure. So 
you take your own measurements and you enter them into the, you know, their site and then it spits out a pattern for you geared towards exactly what you put in. So it's nice because you buy the one and you end up being able to make leggings for pretty much anybody because you can input and reuse as many times as you want. Um, but other than that one, um, I really like green style leggings. Um, I made, uh, I've made the strides, which I like. It's got, um, a nice little panel accent stripe on the side of the legs. And... I bought, uh, I'm pretty sure I have most of theirs, but their new one is the Sundial, which I really like, have it made, but I like the look of. Yes, Sally, that is exactly what it is. Should all, what might be the same ones I'm talking about. Unless it's the DIBY um, do it the do it better yourself club also has um, leggings that start with an A. Uh, it's the ABB leggings. Do, do, do. So I have found that I don't like feeling the extra. Um, waterproof canvas on the inside because when I'm when it's like this I can feel it right here so I'm actually going to turn it back out and trim that a little bit See if I can find my duck bill scissors. I can't find the correct scissors, so I'm going to use these Kai ones that are curved so that I can make sure that I'm cutting the right one. So I'm, I don't want to cut it all the way down, but just to make take out some of the bulk. I am making the Sydney crossbody bag. And notice I am only cutting the waterproof layer because I don't want to take away from the um, structure or foundation of the pocket. I want to give the stitches something to hold on to still. Turn that back out. Oh. 
much better. So, you do this one. Usually for something like this, I like to use my um, duck bill scissors or uh, what's technically called applique scissors. It's got a, like, one of the blades is actually like a D-shaped so that you don't puncture through when you're, you know, trying to do this. but these will work too. Okay. No worries, Delba. You're still here. Didn't get too far. It always feels like it takes forever to do anything. Okay, so now that we are turning it back, Oh no, Sally, yes. Checking the scale on the printer is super, super, super important and often something that I skip as well because I don't pay attention. Even though now when I use my projector, I mean, it projects right onto a cutting mat. So it's right there. I should be able to um, check the scale just fine, but I don't. Okay, so fold the cargo pocket along the first marked line from the left, lining sides together. So we're going to fold this way to this way. And so my first line is here. I'm using my folding folder to help make that crease. Oh, I love my projector too. I love it much, much, much more now that I got a stand for it and it doesn't have to sit on the table. I need to get a new table though. I have one of those um, cutting tables that fold and unfortunately it is really wobbly. So if you look at it the wrong way, it will move. <laughs> So then after that, um, edge stitch along the folded edge only an eighth an inch or less from the fold, back stitching at start and stop. So you are going to do either an eighth or a scant eighth and make sure you back stitch. That table is horrible. So now that I can use a smaller table to cut, um, I'll probably get an actual sturdier one. Fold the other edge under with the fold along the first marked line from the right. So pretty much do the exact same thing. But on the other side. Hi, Denise. And then you 
do the same, a scant eighth of an inch. It is good bag making weather. So this is what I have. And just trim off the extra threads. And then lay the pocket flat so all sections are exterior side up. So like this, slide both stitched folds to the center march line and press. Pin the fold in place along the top and bottom edges. So that middle line that you drew, you are going to bring that in there. Like so. And... I am not going to pin them because it's too thick between the interfacing and the waterproof canvas, so I don't want to chance messing anything up. And then, oh, Empress. Beth, I have high hopes for this one. I have invested so much time already, and I'm only on the first pocket. Okay, so then we're going to keep it together, and you're going to top stitch along the top edge of the cargo pocket about an eighth of an inch from the edge. You know what? I'm going to press this from this side too. to tap stitch along the top edge so right up here that's going to be an eighth of an inch so I'm gonna keep my fingers on where I folded them to make sure that it's doesn't shift Jumper time. Stacey, this is the TL2000 QI. So I think it is the, um, the entry level one of the TL series. So this one does not have um, adjustable uh, speed. Uh, the 2010, I believe, has like the sliding gauge or something right here that you can fix or that you can change for slow or fast. 
um, and then we're going to machine base along the bottom to hold the pleats in place. So change my stitch length. I'm going to change it to six. Some machines don't go up that high. That's fine. And it doesn't say, but I am going to um, baste this also at an eighth inch. And remember, you don't have to backstitch on basting. So it looks like this. Pretty cute. Uh-oh. Did I melt something? I may have. Um, and then fold each side of the cargo pocket under three quarters towards the lining and press. Holy crap, this is like the thickest pocket ever. Dream sewing machine. Um, I think I would like the, um, maybe the Juki Haruka. That might be the QVP 18. I'm not sure what the model number is, but it's called the Haruka. Um, I am not sure that I want a, an industrial, especially at this point, because I don't have the room to put it anywhere. Now, if I had the room, that might be a different story. So, three quarters of an inch. Oh, nice, Beth. One day, actually I'm going to use these clips because I don't have to worry about it leaving indentations in vinyl and these are a little stronger. And I'm going to edge stitch. So fold in both edges. seam gauge in there to make sure that I am at three quarters. Which one, Deb? Put this here just to down the heat on my iron a little bit. Oh, an industrial. I love the idea of the industrial power. Um, just not the idea of the industrial space that it will require. And we are edge stitching along these as well. Oops. Oops. Forgot to change my stitch length, so don't do that.
I slow down when I get to the thicker parts because I'm paranoid that um, the machine is going to break the needle and spit it back up in my eye. So, uh, I am a little paranoid about that. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Pretty cute. Of course, now I gotta go back and look to see what we're doing. So we're doing the left side first. Yeah, definitely is not cheap. I know that Shinova has said that she has um, sewn on a Sailrite machine and really liked it. So I'm not sure exactly what the cost is on it. didn't notice I got lazy and decided not to press. together. Okay, now is really when I wish that my smaller iron was in reach because it would be perfect for getting into the smaller area. And I know we just talked about pressing actual being pressing and not ironing and moving back and forth, but I also melted a little bit of the other pocket, so I don't want to oops, keep it in one spot and have it melt something else. Okay, so the next step is to keep these pleats together and top stitch the top.
Okay, so we top stitch the top and turn my stitch length back up to six. And let's machine base the bottom. And you fold over the edges three quarters of an inch out the iron and press the sides so notice I flipped it so that I am not ironing directly on the waterproof canvas and now we're going to go back and edge stitch along these two sides. Remember to change stitch length. If you all um, are fans of the sew alongs that we have, uh, make sure that you are also a member of the Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H group. So our sister group or sibling group, um, they're actually having a sew along very soon for the book bag backpack, I think. Um, and I know Monica Shinova and I are um, also talking about doing a couple of the patterns over there too. So there are a lot, lots of things going on. really quick. I am using a Juki TL 2000 QI model um, and the thread that I have in is just plain Guterman um, Mara 100 all-purpose. So now we have two pockets. Yay! Five million left to go. So now grab your front panel C piece and hopefully 
you labeled them because there's so many pieces. And I went ahead and transferred the um, markings from the pattern piece onto here. So you can see where the white lines are. That's where the pockets are supposed to go. Kathy, order of what? Thanks, Joyce. Oh, rotary. Nice. Okay, so we are going to... Pin only one side edge of the cargo pocket in place, lining side down, matching the finished edge to the corresponding marked line. Okay, but what if, let me measure my box. That's why you measure again. So your box is supposed to be five by six and a quarter. So let's just measure this one real quick. Uh, eh, it's a little scant. So what did I do with my chalk pen? I know that's what I thought too, Beth, but then it says that you want to match your finished edge seam um, with the corresponding line. So it wants us to match up where we sewed. Shinova and Monica, can uh, you guys look at page five and see if you can interpret what that means and let me know if it's what I'm thinking? While I remeasure this. You know, in a smarter world, I would have picked a different color. Me too. That's why I decided to phone a friend. So it said to pin down, like, unless, I mean... No, unless you stretch it, sew it at the edge. Oh, you know what? I was thinking that these were raw edges, but they're not. So you were right, Beth. Thank you, Nova. Thank you, Sally. Yeah, no kidding, but this is getting really thick. I cannot imagine. 
imagine doing this with vinyl, all vinyl. No, but thank goodness you have an industrial. Um, edge stitch along the pinned edge to attach. So it is showing this part right here. So that is going to be the one part that I am sewing right now. what happens when I had too many lines. Stitch it to the wrong one. Uh, so I'm also embarrassed to say that it was pretty recently that I learned that I was using a seam ripper the wrong way. Like I would go through and do this and be like this is dumb and it takes forever. That's because you're not supposed to do it that way. I want to make sure that I'm not getting the fabric. Um, game changer. I cannot believe I didn't know that. And how did my machine get unthreaded? So we are going to go ahead and Thread this. Remove the thread left from seam ripping. And now go back and sew it to the correct line. side of that same pocket. As the pocket will be taking on its three-dimensional shape now. Ooh, yes it is. Trim off all the thread. And press the pocket flat. So...
that these fold in that side edge. And so you're gonna pretty much pleat it. Um, pin the bottom row edge and baste along the bottom edge only at quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to change this one to a five. And you're going to want to sew it with those edges pleated in. And I may have put my pockets a little too high. The Sydney Cross body bag, Shanna. Thank you, Patricia. Kathy, me too. It is like really growing on me. And then we do the same thing to the other side. So line it up with the correct line. Change my stitch length. I want to make sure that my pockets are lined up. Sally, I'm really liking it too. Although I'm having second thoughts about the vinyl, because remember yesterday when I was trying to sew that um, zipper tab on and my uh, feed dogs totally chewed it up, I'm worried about having it on the outside of my bag because I don't want like the I don't want like the iridescent coloring or whatever to flake off Because it's going to be the pocket flap, you know, so I don't want the pocket flap to be like it's going to be touched often and it's going to be on the outside, so I don't want that to get overhandled and then everything kind of falls apart or not falls apart but flakes off. Trying to look over at my wall of wonders over there and see what else I have. No, 
now we're going to baste the bottom again. Make sure you hold those pleated sides as you baste along. Okay, so we have officially finished attaching these cargo pockets. All that is left is to put on the um, pocket flap, but I need to decide if I want to keep that or not, because remember this is the one that I had picked. And it looks amazing, but it gets ruined so easily. So this is the one from yesterday and see all the black right there? That's from my feed dogs. So if my feed dogs can do that, then what's regular wear and tear going to do? So let me walk over to my wall real quick and see what else I have. I don't want it to get ruined already. All right, I have some more options. So first we have this. Ooh. And then there's this. And then there's this. Let me see how easily. I'm trying to scrape at it with my nails to see if anything is coming off so far. No. So let's call this, this goldish one is A, the silver one is B, and the darker one, pewter-ish one, is C. So... A, B, C. Y'all think about it. I'm going to skip the pocket flat part right now until we can decide what we're going to do. And we will attack the front zippered pocket. Actually, let's do this. Let's do the lining pocket because then it doesn't deal with vinyl, so I don't have to worry about it. So we've got two C's, one A. So remember, A. B, C. I'm going to move these aside for now. And while we ruminate on that for a little bit, I'm 
All right, so I am getting a few more C's. I think I like the C too. So you should have a lining main panel with the fleece hole in. Oof. I think unless everybody drastically changes their mind, I'm going to go with C. Um, in which case I am going to recut out the vinyl pieces and um, we'll finish those parts tomorrow. <laughs> Sally. But it gets ruined. I love the look of the original one, but it just... I worry about the longevity and durability of it and especially if I put it up for sale you know like I can't do that knowing that it's going to flake off at any minute So if you all can think about also where you would put a name tag, because I feel like where I would put one, you can't because of those cargo pockets. Man, those cargo pockets took longer than I thought they would. All right, so this is my lining main panel with the um, box cut out. So we are supposed to oh, basically draw a box. I agree, Nova, especially if it's like going to be something you slap your name on, you know? So now I'm going to grab my little template that I had drawn earlier and do, 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 do. mark a box that is three inches down. I will pull some more, I will take a look and see if I have any more options um, hidden away somewhere. I don't have a couple of gold options. Um, might have some smaller rolls. So I'll look for them and then I will post a poll and see what y'all think. So three inches down. Below or above the zipper. I gotta look at the picture again. Oh, probably above, so like right here. Now is, oh, excuse me. Now is when I really wish that I had my metal tag in all the colors because it bothers me to not be able to match my hardware. demoted yourself from cutting. Okay, so 
I had already drawn the box on my clear template and I just drew a line three inches from the top to figure out where that top of the line is supposed to go. So, I feel like I should have thought this through better because I can't draw I can't cut around it so that I can draw the box, but I can't trim it because then it'll mess up the inside. So guess what? We're just going to draw it. So make sure you mark your center and your box is going to be nine by half an inch. So that is going to be four and a half inches in each direction. And then half an inch down. And connect the sides. On the right side of the lining panel, pin the long top edge of an interior pocket panel over the rectangle you just drew right side down. So let's figure out which piece is the interior pocket panel. Seriously, 80,000 pockets. So make sure if you haven't cut yet, label every single pocket exactly the way that she writes it because there are so many pockets. There's this pocket, there's the slip pocket, there's the zipper pocket, there's the cargo pocket, there's, yeah, it's, I didn't realize there were so many pockets. So we're gonna flip this over to the right side and Pin the long top edge of the interior pocket panel over the rectangle you just drew, uh, right side down. So it should go past the rectangle box by about an inch on the top left and right. Okay, so basically we just center it two inches down. I don't know why she didn't just say that. So there's two inches. And I was... So 
I can see the crease that I made and I mark the middle and I'm just going down two inches from the top to take it right here. And it's supposed to be right side together. So Flip it over so you're looking at the wrong side of the lining main panel and sew right along the marked rectangle. Oops. One more stitch. We went ahead and sewed the box on. Just checking the back to make sure everything looked fine. Looks fantabulous. Get rid of these pins. <clears throat> and oh, now I can use my little template. My foot was on there just in case you were wondering. Okay. 
to. Also, something easy that I thought I was doing to save myself time, ended up spending more time. So, back to doing it the old school way. And I need to replace the lead in there. Um, well, Beth, let's see what the 43. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see how far we get. For sure we will be finishing the cargo pockets tomorrow. Um, probably some of the other pockets too or anything that involves the um, vinyl. pocket panel through the line you just cut and press flat against the wrong side of the lining main panel. to do when it's fabric. Press the seam. Yeah, cutting, <laughs> cutting was not fun. Just 
just roll this little piece. pocket zipper on the wrong side, face down and centered over the hole, yada yada yada. Okay, so this one's supposed to be nine inches long. So remember you measure from the top of the teeth down to nine. A mark right below that and I am going to sew a few stitches pretty because no one's going to see it. Cut off the rest. I'm just going to leave a little bit for insurance. Remember, don't use your fabric scissors. So now we need our double-sided tape. Okay, so remember to orient your zipper the way that you want it to open. So I like my zipper tab to be on the left when it's closed like this. Oh my gosh, this is going to be hmm. I kind of want to stitch this down before I even put the zipper on just because the canvas is so thick and not pliable. So I am not following for this part. Guess what I just did? Wait, how? I thought I ran out of bobbin thread. But there's still bobbin thread in here. Mm. A feeling when you're, you've been sewing and you realize you weren't sewing anything the worst. Okay. 
Why? So I'm not seeing. Where is it? And I just can't see it because it blends in that well. Now it's sewed. Apparently I just can't see it because this glutamin thread is such a good match. So I just sewed the top and the bottom just to keep the flaps down and make it easier to position my zipper because there was no way I was going to be able to do it the other way, but it would have taken a lot of finagling. So it'll be like that. And actually for this, since it's going to be a thinner seam allowance, I'm just going to use some tape that uh, I'm going to end up getting rid of. So this is just medical tape. Um, did not know that people used it in sewing, but um, I saw it at Wawak, so I decided to buy it, because if it's on Wawak, I must need it. And, um, I like it because you can sew through it. Um, you can remove it easily. You can use it on patterns, pattern paper. And it's super cheap. Like, super cheap. So. Move it down a little bit. I hate zippers. That's all. Okay, so it's going to go in like so. And again, I am not using double sided tape because it is such a small seam allowance that my needle will not be able to avoid it, and um, it absolutely hates sewing through double-sided tape. So instead,
going to switch feet. So, goodbye, walking foot. use the zipper foot come on and now we're going to adjust the foot so it's on the other side of the needle my needle down to make sure that it is not catching and it wasn't but I like to make sure That would have been bad. hot mess of tape.
Thanks, Kathy. Okay. Moving on. Now pin, 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 pin the remaining interior pocket panel to the pocket panel sewn to the zipper, right sides together, and matching all raw edges. I'm going to turn it upside down. Okay, so this is going to be a half inch seam allowance. It's gonna bug me, sorry. And you're going to leave the bottom edge unsewn so that you can turn the bag later. So make sure that you fold your main piece out of the way. I'm gonna switch back to my walking foot just because I usually have that one on. Checking to make sure there's nothing extra. out of the way. Oops. Put your foot back down before you sew. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sew a couple of stitches um, before I stop at the bottom and reinforce it a couple of times just to strengthen that um, space for when we birth the bag. It gives it more strength.
I want to do the same thing on this side. because it's driving me crazy. We have our lining panel piece with our zip pocket. Okay, so I think that's where we're going to leave off for tonight because I have to decide what vinyl I'm going to replace um, my original choice for and uh, I'll cut out those pieces. So tomorrow night when we get back we will be putting on the flaps to the cargo pocket. Um, both cargo pockets, and then we are going to do the front zippered pocket, and um, do, 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 do. actually, we might as well knock out this back slip pocket because it doesn't have anything to do with the vinyl. Sorry, Kathy, I lied. I just can't leave you all. No, I just don't want to leave too much for us to do later. So, right sides together. the top straight edge only at a quarter inch seam allowance.
clip the wrong sides together. Ugh. Why don't I ever look at this before? I have a wrinkle. Okay, I think this is a sign that I am done for tonight. So, I will see you all tomorrow night. We will pick up from where we left off. Um, I will have my new vinyl pieces, the options posted um, so that everybody can vote on a poll. And tomorrow before the live, I will sew out or cut out the new vinyl pieces. All right. Thank you, everybody. I will see you tomorrow with the new vinyl selection and um, to work on the rest of the pockets and the um, zip top panels. So have a good night.